Welcome back fellow fans of Clash of Clans, or if it's your first time here, do not forget to hit that subscribe button for the earliest and most accurate update information. It is your host Galadon, and today we're taking a slightly deeper look into the hog glider. Not quite a deep dive. Let's save that for Itsu. We'll have him on the channel. We will get into really deeply about the upcoming meta, the way bases will change, the best ways to use the hog glider. But for now, we're just going to get our proverbial feet wet, wade in maybe about ankle knee deep and check out the hog glider. And of course, we have to try some mass hog glider attacks as well. So right here, we're just running through the different levels of the hog glider. So you know those upgrades as you go are going to make a big difference in the strength of the hog gliders, specifically at level eight. That is where you get an additional hog glider in your camp. Also, remember these are the developer build numbers, so it's possible we could see slight adjustments up or down in hit points or damage, or even what happens to the upgrade levels before the update actually drops. All right, so there's a couple of key elements to remember about the hog glider, and the first one is the glider itself. It has a few hit points, not a lot of hit points, but usually enough to get it into a defense. Now, if it takes damage enough to destroy the glider, and this is the key to remember, it's not just any damage. It has to take enough damage to destroy the glider. Then the hog will drop before it gets to a defense. So we can take a look right here in the developer build at this hog glider going after this cannon. Gonna crush it. Oops, Tesla pops up. You'll notice the hog glider took damage, but it still landed and stunned that maxed out level 9 hidden Tesla. It was plenty of time for it to get in there to wipe that defense out and for the hog to move on. So it's only if the hog glider takes too much damage that it's going to fall from the sky and lose that stunning glide ability. Remember the stun is only effective when the hog glider itself lands at the defense. So we can show that in effect right here. This time we've got all sorts of firecrackers and they are going to wipe out the glider before it gets to a defense. There you see the hog glider became a hog rider. The hog rider gets to the Tesla and there was no stun because the stun is called the stunning glide, and that is the key. The glider has to be alive in order for the stun to work. Now, of course, this hog rider is still doing major work right here to these firecrackers once on the ground, and that's just an early foreshadowing of what you need to be aware of when you design a base in the new hog glider era. So in come the massive hog gliders and they easily wipe it out. Watch again, the ground hog gliders, I'm sorry, the ground hog riders, this is gonna be tough. They don't stun, but the hog gliders do. Okay, hold on. Hog rider, hog glider, do not get it wrong. They start in the air, but they're not up there for long. If they land on a defense, they bring that strong stunning glide, the hog and its rider on a defense smashing ride. This has been your host, Dr. Galasus. Subscribe for more poems and Clash Bedtime stories. All right, so those hog riders and gliders put that developer build base to bed. Obviously, you could tell that wasn't a normal base. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on and check out some more hog gliders in action. Now, before we get on to some mass hog glider attempts and some real hog glider attacks, let's just show how the hog glider can be used to exploit slight irregularities or errors in base design. Remember, it starts out as an air troop and then becomes a ground unit. This makes a huge difference. Right here, notice the glider dismounts. The air targeting defenses are never an issue. The glider gets in, becomes a rider. He destroys the cannon and moves forward. And there's not really anything here that can stop him. The archer tower is trying, but he's within that dead zone of the multi-mortar. It is going to get wiped out easily. And the hog rider is actually going to get through one more defense before it goes down. So a huge value right here, getting three, de okay, fine. Two defenses out of the way, but you can still see what I'm talking about, right? Okay, where the hog glider is going to move in and stun. And that stun is absolutely key. Now getting the stun to target specific defenses isn't always easy, especially when you have multiple defenses in an area. Right here, check it out as the hog riders make quick work of these cannons. And also notice how they're ignoring the guard post troops. So just the same as the mechanic in the home village, say they're ignoring clan castle troops or skeleton traps, the hog riders move on and get wiped out, but not before they took out all of the defenses in that quadrant of the base. So again, they certainly have a very specific function. I would actually say that the hog glider is a high risk, high reward type troop in that it's difficult to get it right, but when you do, 
oh man, it can be extremely powerful. Just imagine using a primarily air-based attack with just a couple of hog gliders that come in and take out the air bombs like you see right there. Now, they don't even need to necessarily take the air bombs out because the stun may be enough. You run one single hog glider in and it stuns those air bombs long enough that, say, the dropships, the minions, the baby dragons even, can get in and wipe out that specific either firecracker or the air bombs. So the hybrid attacks, the popularity of those is definitely going to increase. You're going to see that the hog glider can be used in air attacks and in ground attacks because remember, he's technically a ground troop after the initial stunning glide. So the hog can get in there and join a ground attack of barbarians, cannon carts, that sort of thing. Or it can augment an air attack by stunning key or vulnerable defenses in a builder base. So that's another thing to remember and the huge advantage to playing on this side of the ocean. Ocean, I guess, yeah, is the fact that you can change the army after you've looked at the base. Boy, don't you wish you could do that back at the home village? All right, so that mass hog glider attack didn't work out very well. Let's take a look at, yes, that's right, it's Itsu. Itsu dropping hog gliders in a hybrid attack. So just what we talked about here. Now, again, think just even more advanced to the idea of chain stunning a specific defense. Dropping in one hog glider, hog glider and then waiting a few seconds, dropping another in, and it continues to keep a specific high hit point defense stunned, whereas it might not be able to take it out with the hog rider. The hog glider might stun it long enough to get the job done. Now, hey, check out Otto running into the builder hall. Did you see that? He ran from the builder hut at the top of the screen. Okay, so Itsu is going to use minions hog gliders and night witches right here so notice again you've got that stun that is working from the hog glider timed with the units that are moving into the base so that is going to be where we talk about that high risk high reward it is not going to be easy to get this timing right but this is likely something that pro top level builder base players already have some experience with if you think about barbarians and the crushers timing those crushers so that you can get those units in and wipe out the crushers so they don't take out massive barbarians or your battle machine. Again, I think it's going to be an exciting addition. It is a high skill troop. I think that there's going to be a learning curve. You need to learn the timing. That's why friendly challenges are going to be extremely valuable. And right here, Itsu manages over two thirds of this base. 72, wait, 70, oh come on Itsu. 74, 76% with hog gliders, night witches, and 36 minions. Remember, the minions are getting more per camp at level 18. All right, so let's let Galadon give it a try with hog gliders and baby dragons. So not quite dirty baby dragon spam, but you know that's coming in a future episode. Here, we're going to try to use those hog gliders and specifically their stunning glide to help keep the baby dragons alive as I, well, pretty much just spam them. I'm trying to spread them out so that they each can use their tantrum ability. Remember, that has always been an important strength of the baby dragon, keeping it distant from others so that it stays enraged and does all that damage. So we haven't used the hog gliders yet. Wait for it as we've cleared those outer buildings first. In come the hog gliders here. Now, of course, ideally, I would get this hog glider in and stun the air bombs. So again, you have to think about where that's going to happen. Right here, there's a stun. Of course, there's no baby dragon around to protect it, but eventually the hog gliders come in and the three hog gliders from one camp do take out the air bombs specifically. So now maybe this didn't work out quite as I had planned. The battle machine could have come in later. We could have used the hog gliders to stun the smasher, crusher, slammer, crusher. Yeah, crusher over there on the left-hand side. But eventually, we're going to work our way in here with the last baby dragons and get the builder hall down, despite all of those defenses firing away. And, uh, well, okay, so we didn't quite get what Itsu got, but hold on. We can at least get one or two more buildings here. Maybe. Oh, that's not good. Okay, but we'll get this elixir storage. So 60, what is it, 8, 9? I forget. Hold on. I'll know in about two seconds. 68%, not bad. I'll take it. Two-thirds down. And, uh, you know, it's just an early practice with the hog glider exhibiting its synergy with other units. Obviously, there's going to be players that can come up with way better ideas. But let's go ahead, before we go, and just do some mass 
hog glider spam. Just throw it in hog gliders and nothing else. You can see, yes, they do wipe out lots of defenses, but again, the problem like we spoke about earlier. Now right here, it looked like the battle machine was going to be fine. Notice the battle machine actually abandoned the builder hall because of the guard post troops. So we would have had the builder hall down. Of course, it still would have been a one star because we were nowhere near. But again, drop a camp of hog riders, gliders, and put in minions, put in archers, and perhaps that is a two star. You never know. It depends upon the base design as well and whether or not the cannon cart, the archer, can reach out over that wall and take down the builder hall. Now in a case like this, because the builder hall has three spaces between it and the wall, your archers aren't going to be able to get the job done. They're gonna to need to move around and that's a key to building defenses in the new hog glider meta. Or maybe it's not a meta, we'll see. Okay, so here's an example of all hog gliders and just one camp of archers. So the idea is the archers can move in and say, do the cleanup right here, take out those outer buildings. The problem is because of this base's layout, the archers still, like I said, can't get into the builder hall. We haven't gotten through enough of the defenses. The roaster is still up and the guard post units are as well. So no chance, but again, maybe this is something that top level builder hall players will figure out a way to use to exploit or so to speak and get those hog gliders in with other units and start wiping out bases left and right okay one last time mass hog gliders this time going to kind of surround the base and perhaps this is even better now of course you could do this in waves so that you keep defenses stunned for longer periods of time maybe that lets your battle machine get in there more deeply this time we do actually end up getting what feels like pretty close. Notice the entire left side of the base is devoid of defenses. There is nothing over there. But of course, on the right side, a couple of longer range defenses like the Mega Tesla and the Giant Cannon. And of course, my battle machine, I don't know about yours, my battle machine loves to go up to crushers and shake hands. It does not usually end well for the battle machine. Anyway, that is going to do it for today's Wade into the Hog Glider. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Stay tuned for more exciting sneak peek and update information. Stay subscribed, stay notified, have a great day, be kind to other people, animals, and the planet, and I'll see you all back here again tomorrow for more Full Attacks. Galidon, are you saying hog rider or hog glider? Yes. Yes, I am. What? Yes. Galidon.